YouTube, Topaz Yates back with another mixtape review. And this one, we're going to jump into this J. Cole and Dreamsville, The Revenge of the Dreamers 2, man. And quite honestly, I've said this shit all year. Every time this type of shit comes up, man, these types of projects, I tell you, it does not motherfucking work. And that holds true to this fucking point. Even though J. Cole has done just as good of a job of surrounding himself with talent as anybody else in the street except for maybe Tech 9 and shit, this project still does not motherfucking work, dude. And what's this multiple? reasons for this my dude like first okay I know a lot of people don't have J. Cole as being the best rapper today but it's kind of difficult to not have him in top two at least at the minimum top three and shit but okay how does the top rappers in this game surround themselves with talent that's going to be equal to him and then do a project with them you feel me how does that actually happen when really when you're the best that means not too many people can actually hang with And if you keep that in mind, man, this project was kind of doomed from the start when you realize, okay, if Cole ain't on it, then it's not on the level in which it kind of damn near needs to be. And J. Cole has done the best job outside of Tech 9 and shit of surrounding himself with talent because I definitely do enjoy these guys' individual projects, but as you listen to them, especially on a project in which J. Cole is focused on, you kind of realize they trying to do the same things that J. Cole is doing, which is another huge damn mistake. Like, go back and look at Rockefeller back in the day. Why is it that Memphis Bleak, Beanie Siegel, all of these other gangster rappers never achieved the level in which Jay-Z accomplished, but yet the, when the polar opposite artist comes through, all of a sudden he blows up to that level where he's damn near equal to Jay, and that's Kanye West. Looking at J. Cole's artists, man, a lot of them are following down the same footsteps, doing the similar types of music that he's doing, and that just quite doesn't work when you're building a record label. You want to have a bunch of different fan bases audiences all coming together to boost up the label, not having everybody duplicating the main star because none of these other people are going to achieve that same level. And we see that in a bunch of these tracks here, like quite honestly my favorite tracks off of this project would be those Folgers Crystals awesome track from beginning to end. I also like that Cage Bald in which what he's rapping about here is the prison industrial complex and such. He's given us both deep concept and a damn good song at the same damn time which a lot of MCs really do not do that shit. But besides those, a bunch of lackluster type performances, man. Like take that Omen 48 Laws, man. Comes off as a track that J. Cole had and just handed it off like you need this in order for you to become better but yet Omen can't follow through like J. J. Cole would follow through. Same thing with that boss night job in such a which J. Cole is featured on that shit and it sounded like it was his track from the fucking beginning instead of a unique track to him. There's really only but a few joints on here that are rather different and that's like that cars with tabs in which that kind of comes off as a Migos type track but yet on a much higher skill level and the thing about that is any type of music with the right artist behind it can become a better type of music and I think that could happen with the Migo style, but this right here is not it. It's not reinventing that. It's not taking it to a high enough level in order for it to be respectable. And I'm not saying that this project is terrible by a long shot. I'm just saying it comes off as a J. Cole project without J. Cole on most of the motherfuckers. And two, even though I like these other artists, they're just not on that level in such to try to emulate J. Cole. On top of the fact that click type projects, man, going back to Strangulation to Young Money Project to damn Rough Riders back in the day, none of them have fucking worked and this goes along with that. Overall, I give this a 6 out of 10. But that concludes today's review, man, and we're going to jump into a brief instrumental from underground producer Lazy Rider before we jump into the news, and then we're going to jump into an article from DownloadPass.com. <laughs> came out and said that he had kidney cancer and he had to undergo surgery today in which he did it and they're saying that it was successful man so I'm very happy for that man hopefully Lil Boosie get well soon but anyway on to today's article from downloadpads.com and today's article is about people complaining about the decisions that they make and you know this is one thing that always irritates and pisses me the fuck off dude because 
Ain't nobody telling you to do the things that you need to motherfucking do. Like, we come across too many motherfucking rappers out here that's complaining about how difficult this approach is, how hard rap is to succeed in. You knew that shit going into it. And if you didn't, you were too gullible to follow what you hoped the industry was instead of actually researching shit. But you made the fucking decision to be a rapper. No need to complain about that shit now. You did it. Now it's time for you to work at that shit. Like, all the complaints complaining and bitching these people do is merely them trying to convince others to say okay it's cool for you to give up when it's not either you do this shit or you don't there's no need in you complaining every motherfucking step of the way i hope you enjoyed the show you can follow me at twitter up there and you can go to downloadpads.com that's down there to read today's article